Okay, great. Thank you, Cindy. So first I'll say that I work in the earthquake and tsunami program in the seismic hazards branch at the California Office of Emergency Services. And the focus of this section is clearinghouse coordination with Cal OES, the state operations center, regions, and local government. The frequent question that we get is, how does all of this important information get to emergency management? So we'll begin at the start. Uh, very first of all, when an event happens, uh, Cal OES has an earthquake and tsunami um, duty officer that immediately gets the information and starts coordinating. Our first call is to the California State Warning Center. And then we begin coordinating with the California Geological Survey to share technical information on faults and depths and political and potential impacts. Staff are already um, looking at being deployed to the State Operations Center and then can be deployed to the Regional Operations Center based on need um, and the location of the event. So I'll take a minute to step back and explain why emergency management operates the way that it does. We use the standardized emergency management system. So what is SEMS? It's the cornerstone of our emergency response system and the fundamental structure. And SEMS was introduced after the 1991 Oakland Hills fire, which eliminated some coordination issues with communication and equipment. Um, host fitting sides didn't match, so the resources responding into the area did not have the ability to support each other as they needed to um, during that critical event. So SEMS was developed and adopted in 1993 under Government Code Section 8607 in the California Emergency Services Act. The intent was to improve coordination of federal, state, and local emergency management and response. So how does a statute improve coordination? The standardized emergency management system was developed with these specific operational components. The incident command system, a field level emergency response system that we can all use, multi and interagency coordination that affected agencies working together coordinate on all levels, a mutual aid system, which the mutual aid system has been in place for many years in California, but this was codified it in statute a system for obtaining additional emergency resources from non-affected jurisdictions, and then the operational area concept, where a county and its subdivisions coordinate damage information and resource requests um, at the local level. SEMS and ICS, uh, Cal OES has to, is required to follow SEMS under the Emergency Services Act. And the important part of this is that all events and incidents are coordinated and managed at the lowest possible level. Cal OES response and coordination in the field is in alignment with ICS. We do have a few of our regional staff, law, fire, and our Cal OES contacts that are in the field. Um, very often you'll also see this response system aligned in the emergency operations centers that are not field response, but they provide critical support to field response. And then unified command is when all agencies with a legal or jurisdictional responsibility coordinate together to mitigate. And this is really important for large events. Just a quick clarification, you'll find us, the earthquake and tsunami uh, technical specialists in the planning section. The California Geological Survey would be in the State Operations Center, not only as a state agency representative, but also as a technical specialist in the planning section. The earthquake clearinghouse is not part of the incident operations, but is an offsite physical location that coordinates with and reports both to the CGS agency rep and the earthquake technical specialist in the State Operations Center. Very briefly, we'll talk about what Cal OES's responsibilities are to protect the health and safety of people and preserve lives and property. And to achieve this, we've really uh, focused down on the 
mutual aid regions, the subdivisions of the state and the structure. When local resources are overwhelmed, requests move to the next level. So local government would go to the regional level to fill in them. Those resources were unavailable. Then it would move to the state level and then to the federal level, which means that we're maximizing or mobilizing the use of resources closest to the incident. This is a graphic that helps visualize the mutual aid regions and the Cal OES regional operation centers, which are the inland region operation center is in Fairfield, is in Sacramento, the coastal operation center in Fairfield, and the southern operation center, you can see that on the bottom in Los Alamitos. So this is important for helping us funnel those resource needs and requests up to the state level. Now, the clearinghouse physical location, what is needed? The size of the facility needed and the duration of use is really based on the location of the event and the level of impact to people and structures. We need a safe location, we need significant parking, restrooms, electricity, uh, Wi-Fi or good cell coverage for the briefing calls, tables and chairs, and very importantly, it needs to be structurally sound post-event it would need to be inspected and cleared after, after, after aftershocks to ensure that it's safe for occupancy. And there could be an additional need for security based on the area of the facility and the presence after dark. So we need a large loca location to safe facility. During COVID, we would be following the same type of screening and social distancing and PPE would be available. We're working on that now to ensure its availability. Cal OES does have the ability to mission task state agencies to contribute resources during emergencies. So we might be able to look through a state facility database with Department of General Services to see what state facilities might be available and might meet the requirements. Earthquake and tsunami staff can also coordinate um, with regional staff and with local government to identify potential local facilities that might be available. After a large event, the Cal OES <clears throat> Earthquake and Tsunami Program and California Geological Staff will be at the State Operations Center. We, our staff may also be in the field supporting local government or the clearinghouse. And coordination between the SOC and the clearinghouse begins immediately after the event and the clearinghouse is stood up. Our information flows from the State Operations Center to the Cal OES Multi-Region Coordination Center, the MRCC, to the Cal OES Regional Contacts and down to local government and in reverse when information is coming back up to the State Operations Center. The SOC, the REAC, and the MRCC and local government can all participate in clearinghouse briefing calls. So the communication of the clearinghouse information is key. Seismic Hazards Branch and the state operation ensure that this information is provided to everyone in the state operations center, as well as other state agencies and federal agencies from the beginning of the event. The Earthquake Program Duty Officer also distributes clearinghouse information weekly to the weekly duty officers and the executive duty officers so that our boots on the ground, wherever they are with throughout the state have access to that information. And the earthquake clearinghouse information is also included in all of our SOC situation status reports for each operational period. Emergency management priorities. It's important to understand the scope and the level of impact. At the very big outset, we need to know how widespread is the potential damage? What's the level of damage to, to building and structures? Are transportation arteries passable? Are there utility related fires? So we're looking at all of these items from the very beginning to size up incident. And so information is available from situation status reports. We look at media and social media reports. We look at aftershock forecasts, reports from the field, specific observations, and then hazardous runs that estimate the damage, levels of damage, injuries, and other impacts. Scientific analysis from field observations and data is really important. 
The implications of what might not be known can be highlighted by the clearinghouse. After slip in the Napa earthquake was something that, because we had a surface fault rupture, was something that we had not experienced and needed to be able to communicate to local government and other agencies out in the field that repaired infrastructure may need to have continued repair as the fault continued to slip little bits day after day after day. Lateral sp spreading was encountered in Ridgecrest, which caused some cracking in structures to continue, even though there were not significant, there were aftershocks, but not significantly large ones. Um, some cracks were seen to develop an increase in size just throughout a regular day. And then subsidence, settling of various types of soil with increasing hazards due to the large or continuous aftershocks. Many state agency and local government staff have been able to participate in hazards training and they're able to perform runs that can help us um, take a look at impacts based on local inventory data. FEMA will also support the state hazards runs and outputs and translating scientific information into layperson terms to make it actionable is a really big goal after each of the evening clearinghouse briefings. Who are the field participants? Researchers, structural engineers, social scientists, and others. They are not first responders and they're not part of the incident field response. They're not building inspectors and will not assess the safety of structures or quote unquote tag buildings. If they encounter a hazard, they're instructed to call 911 to report it to appropriate authorities. Independently, they direct themselves to areas with physical features or damaged structures. They also may investigate areas receiving high social media interest and may be able to provide clarification. We have noticed in the past that social media is not 100% reliable and that some photos attributed to certain events were in fact photos from um, other locations or past events that had happened that just came to the forefront again. Clearinghouse field participants are volunteers and they should not be contacting local authorities to gain access to inspect structures or to tag them for any of those purposes. Many of the participants will be seeking to review and assess impacts and results. Specific features might include surface fault rupture, subsidence, visible offset of roadways or infrastructure, damaged structures, or visible failure of unreinforced masonry. Field participants openly and freely share their data and photos for the benefit of all to increase understanding and potentially improve post-event activities and actions. The clearinghouse briefing calls are accessible by anyone who's on the Earthquake Clearinghouse email list or reaches out to EERI CGS or Cal OES to be included in the call invitation. Our technical specialist in the State Operations Center distributes the call information widely to ensure that everyone who needs to in the response structure can get on that call. When possible, we like to coordinate the SOC briefings around the, the clearinghouse briefings so that we can include any critical information from the clearinghouse briefing in the, the SOC briefing and our reports. This also has provided us access to technical expertise from um, participants, clearinghouse participants. I know we've asked some specific questions of them back to the clearinghouse and field staff, field participants have been able to provide additional clarification and information. What's also important, what they're seeing in the field is what they're not seeing. And Kate touched on that and being able to identify areas that have no information to report um, helps us see the dynamics of what's actually out in the field. Clearinghouse coordination. So as I've said, the direct coordination between Cal OES and CGS ensures that we're all on the same page. It helps guide decisions, prioritization of resources and advanced planning. It also includes the ability to reach back to Cal OES or CGS for technical explanations or clarifications and the ability for local government or state agencies to connect with Cal OES and CGS to request information or visit 
a visit of a specific location, receiving validated information on an area that may be receiving significant social attention, social media attention, such as in Napa, we had some unreinforced masonry that crumbled and it was noticed through social media and other means that perhaps the barricading was not in a completely um, acceptable location. It was too close to the facility. So we were able to pass that information on and some of that barricading could be uh, enhanced to ensure that anything that might topple off would be unable to strike those that, that might be standing close by. Another important part of this is rapid dissemination of the findings through the Cal OES system. Post event, we conduct an after action and a hot wash. When the field, field investigation is winding down and information is gathered and the physical site is closed, briefing calls may continue past when the facility is no longer functioning, but a final call will at some point occur and then the earthquake clearinghouse management will begin to draft an after action report. Cal OES and CGS conduct a joint hot wash post event to identify improvements and to fine tune our processes that may have had different results during the response. So thank you for joining us today. And if you have additional information or questions, then you can reach out and contact me. Thank you.